Hi there Jeep owners, today in your 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System. Demco's Air Force One is kind of a two-piece permanently installed braking system. We've got our operating unit here under the hood and attached to our pedal we've got our actuating cylinder. We'll be showing you the cylinder in a minute. I'll give you a brief rundown on how the system works and if this is the appropriate system for you. Demco, in my opinion, makes the best braking systems. There's two of them that I really like. We've got the Air Force One here that's one of my favorites. The other one would be Demco's Stay and Play Duo. To determine which one's best for you really depends on your motorhome. If your motorhome has air brakes, you'll want to choose Demco's Air Force One. It's going to be a fully proportional braking system. That's just going to give you great performance. So that way when you hit the brakes in your motorhome, the brakes in your vehicle will apply at a similar pressure. So that way you're not pressing the brakes too hard here. It's going to be very responsive and everything's going to feel very natural when driving it. The other one that I recommended was Demco Stay and Play Duo. That one's not designed to work with air brakes. So if your motorhome has the air brakes, that's why we go with the Air Force One. But if you've got hydraulic brakes on your motorhome, then you would choose the Stay and Play Duo. That one is also a proportional system that uses a, uh, it has an inertia sensor inside the unit that will detect the movement of the vehicle. So that way when you hit the brakes in your motorhome, it'll detect that coming to a stop, that movement uh, and then, then it will apply the brakes appropriately to match that pressure so that way everything feels very natural. So we're using the Air Force One because we do have air brakes on here and with the Air Force One we have to tap into both the vehicle and the motorhome side to get that air pressure. Here's our hose here that goes from our motorhome to our vehicle. There's a tank that's installed on the motorhome and taps into the braking system to get that air pressure back here to our vehicle to make all the magic happen. You'll also get a breakaway switch included with your kit here. And in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, the pin here will pull and that will apply the brakes in your vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the hood down because there's a monitor light included with your kit that's installed on the back side of the mirror. And whenever you apply the brakes in the vehicle, the monitor light will activate. I'm gonna pull the pin here and you should see that it activates. And we know it activates because that works off of the reed switch on our pedal. And we can see there that after pulling the pin, it did activate. And let's take a look at the pedal now so you can see how that, with this light coming on, we can guarantee that our pedal is being pulled. So here we are inside. This is the actuating cylinder that we were talking about. There's a reed switch on the cylinder here, and the, you can see that it's not lit up. If I pull outward on it a little bit, you can see it lights up. It only lights up when the system is activated pulling the pedal, because the reed switch will move out of the way of the little magnet that's inside closing the switch. So when it lights up down here, it also lights up that light on the back side of the mirror. So you can see how this is gonna give us a very accurate interpretation that the pedal's being pulled because this has to actually mo physically move in order for that light to come on. Our system is, our actuator here is clamped around the pedal and it has an anchor that attaches to the firewall with a cable here at the back that gives it the ability to pull our brake pedal towards the firewall, depressing it, applying the brakes. I'm gonna head into the motorhome now and I'm gonna press the brakes in our motorhome and you'll see here that inside of our vehicle, it's going to depress our pedal. And when you're pressing the pedal in your motorhome when you're coming to a stop, if you have a camera on the back of your motorhome, it typically points back at your flat toe here and you can see the light on the back side of the mirror there. So that way while you're driving down the road, you're gonna get real time feedback that your system's operating properly. Now that we've covered some of the features of our braking system, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. Again, we're gonna be doing both our Jeep here as well as a small portion on our motorhome. We'll begin our installation by first mounting all of the major components. Once we got those mounted, it'll be easier for us to route all of our hoses and wiring to them. So the main thing first is the operating unit. We mounted the operating unit on top of our fuse box cover here. To do that, you'll see here we just used some zip ties. We drilled some holes in both the front and the back side of the cover there and then just used the zip ties to wrap around it. We then sealed up the holes with some silicone and that'll hold it nicely in place and we can still access our fuses if we need to. Next we have our breakaway switch. This is our other component that's gonna be outside the vehicle. This mounts here at the front of the vehicle. Typically your base plate provides a mounting location for it, but if your base plate doesn't, we do have no drill brackets and stuff you can get here at e-trailer to clamp it on uh, and then you can use that to get your breakaway switch attached. Our base plate did have a mounting location, so we just attached it directly to that. 
Also here on the front, just to the other side of our breakaway switch here, on the other side of the vehicle, we mounted up our air connection point where this is where you'll connect between your vehicle here and your motor home. So we just used some of the bracketry that came in our kit to mount it up to our electrical connection here. You can see we just kind of drilled out a couple of extra holes and used a couple self-tappers to mount it up to get it in there. We're now inside the vehicle and we need to get our actuating cylinder mounted up. This will clamp onto your pedal. We just use the same nuts and bolts on our cylinder here that are threaded in it uh, to clamp it on there. So just take your nuts off, slide your bracket on here, and then put the nuts back on to clamp it over the pedal. When tightening these down, you don't want to over tighten them. I use the 3 8 socket and I just tighten them down by hand using the socket. That way I know I'm not going to over tighten it and bend it. Uh, if you just do it as tight as you can get it by hand, that's going to be plenty secure. It's not going to go anywhere. On the back of this cylinder, it has a cable that's attached to it and that cable needs to attach to our firewall. So if we pull down our carpet here, you can see I made a little slit in the carpet to allow the cable to pass through. And we attached the anchor for the cable to the firewall here using the included self-tapping screw. You can see we did take a razor knife here and we cut out some of the insulation to make sure that we've got a solid mounting point right onto the metal. When mounting this up, you do wanna make sure that your cable has a straight path from the cylinder back to the anchor point. So that way it doesn't pull kind of sideways or anything and cause your cable to rub inside the cylinder, which could eventually cause it to fray. So as long as everything's nice and straight like this, you'll have a long lasting operation. And the last major component we need to mount up is our LED indicator. It's also here on the inside. It just has two sided tape and we stuck it to the back side of our mirror. This is the most common location to mount it. You could put it on the dash if you want, but with this location here, usually it's visible from the rear view camera on your motorhome. When you're looking back, this is usually pops out pretty well so you can verify your braking system is working properly. The wiring then we just route it up towards our headliner and I just used my fingers to poke it into the headliner. We just worked our way all the way down to the A pillar and I just kind of poked it in the seam here and then poked it behind the weather stripping going all the way down the weather stripping until we get down to our about right here where this seam is and you can actually see a little bit of that wire right here and we poked it over towards our cylinder so we can connect it to the reed switch that's located on the operating cylinder so now we got all those major components mounted up now we need to get all the wiring and hoses to all those to make everything work so we're going to start here at the operating unit we've got our vacuum line here we'll talk about this first so coming out of the operating unit you'll take some of the thicker vacuum line that comes in your kit we're going to cut about an inch and a half to two inches off of that and then take the check valve that comes in our kit and put it in place there the black side should face towards our unit from there the rest of our hose we're going to route over to our uh, the firewall area here where our wiper transmission is we did drill a hole here with a step fit just big enough for our hose to pass through and then our hose poked in here and we actually routed this hose all the way across to the other side you can pull up on this panel if you need to. It'll make things a little bit easier to get your hand in there to help uh, routing that across. It does just pull up. It doesn't pull up too far because your wiper arms there do hold it down, but it does have enough flexibility where you should be able to get it across without damaging anything. So this is the hose that we routed over right here. These hoses right here are actually the factory vacuum brake line. It actually still says it on there, vacuum brake line. So yours will probably say the same thing. Your brake booster is right here behind the reservoir. So there's a hose that comes off the brake booster there and it just kind of does a 90 and it wraps around this way. We cut the 90 out of it, just used our snips to cut the 90 right out of it. And we put the T in place that comes in our kit there. So one's connecting here, one's connecting here. And then we connect to the hose that we routed over with the third side of our T. After we hook that all up there into the T, we need another check valve between the engine and our T here, so we cut our factory line here and just stuck the second check valve in place. The black side of it needs to face towards the engine, so that's gonna be this direction, going off this way. The white side should face towards the hose that we routed over. So we got our vacuum connection done. Next, we're gonna do the air in. This is the air that's gonna be coming from the motorhome that's gonna tell it when to operate. So we're gonna use some of the quarter inch vacuum line that comes in our kit. We're gonna poke it into the quick connect fitting. It just pokes right in. Our line then routes around our fuse box and it goes down up to the fascia at the front. We then route it across the fascia and we just went right across the beam here 
over towards our connection here. And there's a quick connect fitting on the back of this, just like on the unit. We just cut the excess off and poked it right into there. When getting rid of the excess length on your vacuum line, you do want to use a special pair of cutters. That gives us a nice clean square cut. I'll show you here. Look at how clean that is. It's important that you have a nice clean square cut when working with quick connect fittings, because if it's not, it won't seal properly in the fitting. So these are really important that you do have the right tool for uh, cutting this line. Next is our air out here. And this is the air line that's gonna go to the cylinder located on our pedal. So when the unit operates here, it's gonna pull our brake pedal. So it goes out the out here. We just kind of go around the fuse box on the back side, but this time we go towards the inside. So there's a little opening right here that you can actually just poke it right through. It's got some foam in there that you can just poke that right through. Once we come through the opening there, it comes out here and there's a grommet located down there at the bottom. We just push our airline through the grommet. We're now here inside the vehicle on the passenger side, and this is the lower kick area where their right foot would probably be sitting down in here. You'll see this little hump right here with this fabric. That actually just pulls right aside, and behind that is the grommet that we passed our uh, hose through. So you can see that hose passing through right here. Now you might also notice that there's a brown wire here. You'll get some brown wire in your kit. I recommend that when you pass this uh, hose here through the opening, you take the brown wire in your kit and you use some electrical tape and tape one side to your hose. That way you can pull the brown wire through the grommet at the same time, because we need power over at our uh, pedal. So while we're routing our hose, we can go ahead and route this brown wire from the outside in the engine compartment through the grommet here. And then from here, this hose here, we actually just take behind this paneling and we poke it uh, through the openings right here, just kind of lift up on this fabric and we can go behind the center console here to get to the other side. So after our hose came out, it poked through, kind of right through this area here. We routed it up on top of the fabric here going across and then poked it down into our quick connect fitting on our cylinder. Again, we just trimmed off the excess. Our brown wire is also over here. You can see that there. So we routed this over here as well. So while we're down here, we can talk about that brown wire and why we needed it over here. That's the power circuit for our LED indicator. So let me get these wires pulled down here so you can see what we've got going on here. So from your LED indicator, you'll have two wires. And that's this section of wires here. You can see it's got a black sheathing and coming out of the black sheathing, you have a red and a black. The red is your hot wire for your LED to turn it on and the black is your ground wire. We hooked the red wire from the LED to the black wire coming off of the reed switch. And that's what this is right here. This little wire coming off of our cylinder, it's the reed switch. The reed switch has three wires coming out of it. It has a black, a blue, and a brown. So the black from the reed switch connects to the red from the LED. The black from the LED needs to go to this three-way star connector that comes in your kit because we need this to be grounded. The reed switch has a blue wire for its ground, so it also needs to connect to there. And then out of the third one, we use some of the excess black wire that comes in your kit, attached it to that third one here. And then we just kind of bundled up this excess black wire. We routed it over and up to the opening here, this panel just pulls right off and you can see we took a self-tapping screw and a ring terminal, crimped it onto the black wire and then just ran that self-tapping screw into place to get our ground. So that only leaves one wire left down here and that's the brown wire coming out of the reed switch and that's gonna connect to the brown wire that we ran inside here and that's gonna be our power wire. So now we can head back outside and we'll finish getting this power wire hooked up. So here we are back outside. We're on the other side of the grommet in the firewall. This is the brown wire, the other end of it here. We did leave a little bit out here to connect to our battery positive. So we used a heat shrink butt connector. This doesn't come included with your kit, but I highly recommend it for any connection that's not inside the vehicle to ensure it doesn't corrode up. This will just ensure we have a nice long lasting connection here on the outside. You'll also notice that there's a red wire in here with our brown wire. You'll get some extra red wire in your kit and we stripped that back, twisted it with our brown wire, attached it to the butt connector, and then on the other end of our butt connector here, we attached the fuse harness that comes in our kit. The fuse harness does come looped, so we just cut it in half there to open up that loop, strip the ends back, connect it to the butt connector. On the other side of our fuse harness here, we attached a ring terminal and we attached it to the stud located right here. This is our positive stud. This is where you jumpstart the vehicle. Uh, so this is a great point to get power from right here. 
Now you do get a fuse in your kit, it's a 10 amp fuse. I recommend leaving the fuse out of the fuse holder for now. We don't want to install the fuse until we're all the way done, that way we don't accidentally cause any shorts. So we're gonna talk about this red wire next. We got this red wire here. This is to give power to the breakaway switch, which is where we're gonna be going next. So if we follow the red wire from here, goes through that same opening that our airline tube went through. This also routes towards the front, towards our breakaway switch. We did take the breakaway switch wiring though, we routed it towards this direction, and this is about the, as far as we could get, because on the back of your breakaway switch, you're gonna have a black wire, and you're gonna have an orange wire with a black stripe. The orange wire with the black stripe is the one we use for our hot wire. It really doesn't matter. You can use either one, but it just kind of seems more consistent to have the red and the orange connected together for our power side. So then the black side we made are uh, continuation side that's gonna go to our braking system. So the black wire here connects to the black wire off of our unit. You'll see it's got two black wires that come out of the unit. You can use either of these black wires. It doesn't matter which one that you use. The other black wire that's coming out of here needs to get grounded and it's, we put the ground right over here on a little stud that was sticking up right there. Just put a little ring terminal on it. So you can see how this would complete the circuit. If the breakaway pin gets pulled, it closes the switch inside, which then takes the power from the battery, goes through the switch inside the breakaway, then comes back up the black wire, hits our system here. Our system needs ground in order to operate, so that's why we have the ground wire there, and that'll activate our system if we do have a catastrophic disconnect. So with that there, that really does complete all of the wiring and hoses that we need to route and install on our system here. So we're now ready to put that fuse in place and then we can test the system out. Now for testing the system, it does usually have a slight pre-charge in it from testing at the factory. So you can pull your breakaway switch pin and it in most cases it will somewhat operate. It usually doesn't have a very high charge in there, so it won't pull the brake pedal very far, but usually it pulls it far enough to light the LED indicator on the back side of the mirror. If you do pull this though and it doesn't light up, uh, then there is a chance that there just isn't enough pre-charge in here to operate it, so you may need to hook up to your motorhome to get air from the motorhome to make this system operate. So now that we finished up on the vehicle, we're gonna do our motorhome side. We're underneath our motorhome now, we're just in front of the rear axle here. Now, this is the most typical location where you're gonna find the parts that we need to tap into, and usually this is a good location to mount your box up. It is gonna vary depending on your motorhome. We'll take our tank and we're gonna mount it up to a pillar located here on the left. You can mount your tank really wherever you want. You just wanna make sure it's mounted in a place where it's not gonna be obstructed, obstructing anything or gonna collide with anything. This is a good little pocket here where there's no moving components. So we just held it up here and we used uh, just a little paint stick to mark the slots here that were the two screws we used to attach it. After we marked the two holes, we drilled them out with a 3 8 drill bit. The hardware comes included with your tank. We slid the, uh, a bolt with a flat washer on it through the piece of frame here, then through the bracket that has our tank mounted on it, followed that up with another flat washer and then the lock nut, and then we tightened them down. Tighten these down, we use a 9 16th socket and wrench, and we just did the same thing for the other one to get our tank nice and secure. Once you've got your tank mounted, we now need to tap into some of the lines. There's two lines we need to tap into on our motorhome here. We need our supply air, and we need our metered air. Your supply air is typically your largest hose, but if we look at this motorhome, this one was a little more challenging to determine which one was the supply air, because this hose here is a fairly similar size to that one, same with these hoses back here. Normally, your supply is gonna be the largest one, and it's pretty easy to pick out, because it's the only big one. It's also usually green in color, and again, we got some conflicting hoses here. So, in order to determine which one is your supply hose, the first thing you'll want to do is to drain the air out of your system so that way things will be safe. To drain the air out, the easiest way to do that is to just hop in your motorhome, don't have it running, leave the engine off, and then just pump up your brake pedal. Just keep pumping it, pumping it, pumping it. Each time you pump it, you're going to release some air from the system and eventually you're going to exhaust it down. You don't need to get every last drop out, but I'd recommend getting down to below 10 pounds so that way when we go to disconnect these lines, you're not going to get blasted with a bunch of air and potentially dirt particles and stuff right into your face. So after you've depleted all the air, you can come back here then and start testing those lines if you do have multiple large ones. Uh, one of the things that made me choose this line, and I tested this one first, is because this line here, if we follow the line, we can see that it runs towards the back of the motorhome, and that's going towards our compressor attached to the engine there. Whereas these ones just kind of wrap around and I can't really follow them 
back towards that compressor, I could tell that this one was kind of heading that direction. So I checked this one first. I just pressed in on the Quick Connect release here. That's this little collar. I pressed on that and then after this is depressed, I pulled the line out. Uh, a wrench that's a very similar size placed over this can help you push on that collar a little bit easier to get that released. After you've got it released with the hose pulled out, you can then start your motor home up, crawl under here and see if, that, if, see if air is coming out of that line. If air is coming out of that line, you know that it's hooked to your air compressor and it's trying to fill air up into your system so you know you've got the right line. So now that you've identified the correct line, we'll then want to cut our line in half after we cut the line in half, we'll take the quick connect fitting that comes in our kit, that's the larger quick connect fitting, and we'll just simply slide each end of the hose we cut in half into the larger ends of that quick connect fitting. We can then take the quarter inch air line that comes in our kit, we'll cut out a small section that'll poke into the small end of our T fitting that we put on, and then this line is just going to route down towards our tank, and it's going to go on to the inside of the tank. You'll know it's the inside because there's an arrow that's pointing towards the tank, letting you know that air needs to go in this direction, and it's the only fitting on this side. So it's easy to identify that this is the supply side for our air to go into. Next, we'll need to tap into our metered air. The metered air can be a little trickier. The metered air is not going to have any air coming out of it unless the brakes are depressed. So this one again, if you've already identified your line here and you know this is your supply line, you could disconnect this, but I usually recommend still depleting the air out of your system before doing this. So if you do accidentally disconnect the wrong line, you don't have potentially like 120 pounds of air rushing out of there at you. So I do recommend just charging the air again, pulling this line out. After you pull out your line, and I'll help you determine where this line goes, um, which, which one is your meter to help you identify which one to pull out to test it. Typically, you'll have a relay block. So you got a relay block like this that your supplier is going into. And usually you have a second relay block that take, uses the metered air to, uh, re you know, to release air from our brakes to let it work. So you can usually tell which is the relay block that our metered air is going to by looking at these larger hoses that go to your brake canister. So this is our brake canister down here on, uh, on our motorhome. This one's aiming towards the middle. A lot of times you're gonna see these will kind of be facing towards the front, but they're gonna look very similar to this. And you see it's got two hoses going to it. Well, one of them needs to fill the tank and the other one's going to release air from the tank to allow the brakes to operate. And if we follow these hoses up, we can see that this is a relay block that they're going to here. So usually your metered air is gonna go between the relay block that's attached to your brake canisters and the relay block that has the supply air going to it. So that's this one here for us. We can see it's coming out of here and it does go over to this block. So after you've discharged the air, we pull this out, start your motor home up, and air should not be coming out of this hose. You shouldn't have anything coming out of this, but the air should be recharging in your motor home and filling the gauges back up. After you got some air in there, I'd probably recommend getting about 50 pounds in there maybe just so you know you got enough air. You can have an assistant press down on the brake pedal. When they press on the brake pedal, air should come out of this hose. If air does come out of that hose, when a Assistant presses the pedal, you know that you've chosen the correct hose. You can go ahead and reinsert that. They can shut the motorhome down, reinsert that. You can cut this line then and use the smaller quick connect fitting to put it in between the metered air line. We'll then take some of that quarter inch air line that comes in our kit, go in the quick connect fitting, and this is gonna wrap around and it's gonna poke into the valve on the opposite side from our supply air. So that's right here. There's a valve here on top. There are two fittings here on top, so you do want to pay attention to that you're choosing the correct one. We want the one that goes into the valve assembly. The one that's a quick connect that can swivel, that's not the one we want for this connection. That one's actually going to go towards the back of our motorhome. So this is our metered air here, and then this swivelly one here on top. This is our last connection we need to make here on our motorhome. We need to take an airline, a quarter inch airline from this one that can swivel here. And this needs to route all the way to the back of our motorhome where we're gonna have a uh, quick connect that we're gonna be using to connect the air from our motorhome here to the air, uh, to supply air to the braking system on our vehicle. When routing this line towards the back, you wanna make sure you avoid anything that's moving like your steering or suspension components and you wanna avoid anything excessively hot like your exhaust. Whenever routing these lines, I always recommend following factory lines that are already routed and that's just what we did. We zip tied it to those factory lines following them all the way to the back. So here we are at the back of our motorhome. Our hitch receivers right here to the right, our electrical connections here at the back. This is a fitting that comes in our kit and we'll need to mount it here at the back and that airline that we routed towards the back just pokes into the quick connect fitting on it. 
We just drilled a couple of holes and used the bolts and nuts that came in our kit to attach it right to the plate here where our the electrical connector was located, the seven-way connector here at the back of the motorhome. You can put it really wherever you want. Sometimes people put it in the fiberglass. If you do put it in the fiberglass, definitely make sure you've got washers on the uh, top side. Uh, so that way you've got better surface area and to ensure those bolts won't pull through. And that completes our installation of Demco's Air Force One supplemental braking system on our 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee.